I've been trading for nearly 15 years and in this video I show you seven of my favorite price action strategies that you can trade for the rest of your life. Let's start with something simple but very powerful. Here we're looking at a bullish trend. The market made higher highs and higher lows. This is kind of changing here and this is what we would call a liquidity run or a fake out. The market is pushing above a previous high point, the highest high that we've seen so far in this uptrend and then immediately gets rejected. There's no follow through, the market is not establishing itself above this level. This is a strong sign of bullish weakness, but it's not enough to short the market. What we see then is a so-called break of structure. The market is breaking a previous swing low. This is the highest low that we are observing in the uptrend and the market is breaking it. In an uptrend, you typically don't want to see the market make lower lows, especially after it comes after a liquidity fake out. When we look left, then we can identify two targets. We can keep it very simple in the beginning and we can just look at previous swing lows. Here might already be an order block in there and we also have a demand area in here. So those are some great targets and as we can see the market shows rejection. The market first moves into this order block demand area, shows a little bit of rejection, then moves into the next one and is then taking us out of both trades. Let's look at another example. The market shot up higher here, it failed to continue the uptrend and then move back into this zone. This is what we call a demand zone and some traders refer to this as an order block. This is an area where the market in the past showed strong buying interest. We don't want to go long just yet, we want to carefully observe the price action. Right now the market still shows bearishness here, so we want to be patient. Shortly after we get rewarded for our patience. The market is forming this inverse head and shoulder with the left shoulder here, the head is the lowest point and then the right shoulder we have here. The market is breaking the structure, so at this point the market is taking out previous highs and signaling a change in the market sentiment. And especially because this happens at a previous order block and demand area, this is becoming very interesting. If we get in long here, we look left and we find a target area. Here this can be our fair value gap that the market created here after this turnaround. The fair value gap was created here after the market structure shift happened on the downside. Our stop loss can be placed in many different ways. Some traders place it all the way below the lows. Some traders are a little bit more aggressive to put it underneath the breakout area. And then you can see we have the retest here shortly after the breakout and then the market really explodes higher, takes out the fair value gap and we would be out of the trade. This is another very interesting concept. The market was in an uptrend and then entered this long sideways period. In an uptrending scenario, this is not what you want to see. Typically in an uptrending scenario, like what we've seen in the beginning, you have uptrending moves, downtrending moves, uptrending phases, corrective phases. The corrective phases are short. That's really important. In this case, the consolidation or the correction is not short at all. It's very long. We also see signs of fake outs, failed breakouts to the upside. We would call this a distribution pattern. This is then not considered a corrective phase and the likelihood for an up move and a continuation is much, much lower in such cases. Also think about how regular short traders would approach this market. They get in here with a short position and where do they have their stops? The stop zone is generally considered to be above the breakout level. The majority of traders will probably have their stops in this zone. So we don't get in on the breakout because there's a high likelihood that the market will pull back into those zones. And we have a stop run here shortly after. The market moves back into the stop zone, takes out a lot of stops, liquidates them and now still we don't go short. We want to wait for a very specific clue. The specific clue that we're waiting for is selling coming back into the market. We don't want to go short when the market is going higher. We want to wait at least for two or three candles of bearishness and that's where we then get short. In this case you can see after the market hits the stop zone it moves sideways for a little bit, moves lower here we have three or four candles of bearishness. Those could be our entry triggers and then we can see the market really starts to downtrend. So the initial breakout often lures in the impatient traders. Of course not always will you get a pushback and a stop run but if you get this this could be a high probability scenario but again it's really important that you don't trade when the market is going up. You want to see clear signs that the market is finding resistance and that sellers are coming back into the market and this is where you then find those high probability trades. Let's look at a trend structure and let's see what we can learn. 
The market is moving higher. We have the corrective wave. We have the impulsive wave. The market takes out with ease the previous high point, making a higher high. Then we enter the next corrective phase. Just like here, we are in a corrective phase. For now, the corrective phase is not too long, so it's not a distribution. And we want to see, can we find more chart context? First of all, we can see that the market is retesting previous highs. So this is a previous higher high. The market is breaking above it, coming back into the highs and retesting it as support. Also on the way up, the market leaves this fair value gap. So we have two high confluence areas here and high confluence zones on top of each other at one area. The resistance, which is becoming support, and the fair value gap, which also often has a very high chance of stopping the market. And we also have a round number here. So a lot of things are coming together. We wait for the market to break this area. We have a market displacement, which means a very strong market shift, a momentum shift, breaking the previous highs and giving us this entry trigger. We are trading with the trend, right? We have uptrending waves that are much longer, downtrending waves that are shorter, this is especially true here, strong uptrend, weak corrective wave. So we're going with the long-term momentum and this is considered a trend following approach. And you can see the market moves higher, makes this double top, which could have been a sign to get out. We are breaking structure now. So we might be even able to trade us to the downside with what we have learned in the previous examples in this video. Here, another fascinating example. What do we see? The market has struggles with this resistance area. The market is not able to break out yet. However, what we see is when we look at how the market trades into the level is that it recently started pushing really strongly into it with a lot of buying force. The market, after it made this high, moved lower, tried to take out here the structure, but failed. The market had a very strong selling sequence, but within two or three candles, the market shot up higher, rejected the low. So this is a failed breakout, a bullish sign and immediately is back in the level. The next time the market reached the level, we move lower, but we make a significantly higher low. So this is another bullish criteria and another bullish sign. Then the market is immediately back into the level and this time the market is not able to trade away from it. The market is, as we would say, really sticking to the level. And this is a sign of extreme bullish strength. There's a lot of pressure building underneath this area and we are seeing a lack of selling. The sellers, they came in here, they came in previously, and each time they were weaker, and now there are no more sellers left. We wait for the breakout. This is really important. Just because you see this lower bounce or the pressure pattern, we don't go long. We wait for the market to get above this area, and that's where we get into the breakout. And we continue the higher trending move. Very often you will see that after such a pressure pattern, after the market is sticking to the level in this tight consolidation, the pressure that is being released is really strong and the market pushes higher. This is because all of the sellers have been already withdrawn and pushed out of the market. There's no more selling interest. So when the market moves higher, there are no sellers left in the market and the buyers drive the price higher. What we can see is a so-called triple tap. We have three consecutive higher highs, first high, second high, third high, but we also see a lot of weakness. Here, from point two to point three, we see that the market did break out, but look at the rejection. The rejection comes immediately with a strong bearish candle. This is a strong sign of weakness and it makes this uptrend look quite weak. Then even from point three afterwards, we see the market make a lower high. So this is another bearish criteria. What we then see is this momentum shift. Some traders may call this a displacement candle. We break the structure. So now we take out previous lows and the way we take our previous lows is also important with this strong selling sequence. Then what we see is that the market moves lower. We have another sideways period where we have a pullback fake out. After this move lower, the market created a sideways consolidation with a very nicely defined resistance area. We push back above it and get rejected with a lot of force. So if you missed the initial breakout, maybe you've been waiting for a pullback after the breakout, which didn't happen. You wait for the next consolidation area. We wait for the correction. Then we see that we have a breakout attempt. The breakout attempt fails. But again, the way it fails is important. It fails with a lot of selling momentum coming into the market. We also see a lot of bullish wicks here to the upside, which get rejected each time there's buying interest coming into the market with a wick. It's pushed down. And then we have the final piece where the market is showing us this momentum shift candle. 
and afterwards this is where the selling accelerates so sometimes you will not get your first entry we already can see that there's a lot of things hinting towards a bearish market you may miss because there's no pullback no retest but you patiently wait for your next opportunity you don't chase the market when the market is breaking out you wait for the correction and then on the weakness that you're seeing here that could have been another entry point let's do a multi time frame analysis when we are here on the daily time frame we see that the market is in a downtrend we have a strong period of selling then a slight um, pause in the market we have here the corrective wave the corrective wave is pushing into the fair value gap also what we see is this really interesting looking candle with a strong wick to the downside wicks are often interpreted incorrectly by a lot of traders wicks in this case could show a lot of selling interest the market moved lower although it was rejected there was already quite some selling going on at this point we want to go to a lower time frame and we want to observe how this looks in a microstructure environment what we see if we go to the one hour from the daily we see the uptrending continuation the push into the fair value gap we see the lower time frame fake out the market broke out and again it's really important to observe how the market is rejecting here we see that the market is rejecting with a very strong candle this is a clear sign of bearishness coming into the market we see the market is taking out short term lows we see a strong area of selling because we're trading with the lower time frame we don't have to be super early what we do instead is that we wait for the market to give us a clear signal we eventually move lower away from the fair value gap the way the market moves lower is with lower highs here after the lower time frame fake out we make a lower high lower high another lower high again this time the market is sticking here to this zone building a lot of pressure we have here the momentum breakout again it's so important to pay attention to those micro clues those candle structures and those sudden explosions in the momentum and this could have been then our break of structure and it also breaks the higher time frame wick i've made videos in the past where i call this eating the wick which is the concept that not i have invented but i think it's from linda rushke and once the market has eaten the wick so it has taken out the low of the higher time frame wick that often is then the signal that the market is following through into the direction of the higher time frame wick and you can see we have the breakout we have the retest here we close this fair value gap and then the market continues into the long term direction that we have seen on the higher time frame so we're going with the long term trend waves but we timed our entry on the lower time frame you could go for the first target here because you're going with the higher time frame trend you could also think about stretching your target because essentially you're looking for a higher time frame trend continuation